Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, so, um, yes, I am uh, Xavi. I'm representing this wonderful work on uh, uh, face aging with uh, recurrent neural networks. Uh, unfortunately, Wei didn't get the visa, so he couldn't make it. And Nico has kind of a last minute issue. So, you guys are stuck with me for the next 10 minutes. I'll try to make you not asleep, even if it's uh, right after lunch. Um, so, of course, we are not the first ones trying to do um, phase aging. And in the community, they identify different challenges. For example, how to preserve the specific features of the input phase, or reproduce uh, these fine grain patterns like the wrinkles. Also, how to be robust to illumination. And finally, how to be able to model smooth transitions that are inherent to the aging process. And this is exactly the um, point of uh, our work, and to understand why I here show an example of what would happen if you have, let's say, a one-step method that from a child phase tries to generate a teenager phase. And you can see that uh, there are many ghost um, artifacts that appear here, and this is due to the large gap between the input age and the desired output age. So to avoid this, the intuition behind our method is we want to be able to model smooth transitions of the faces and to generate them. So at the end, we get a much more realistic uh, image that doesn't have all these uh, ghost effects. So to do this, we split, let's say, the age range in uh, nine age groups. So at the beginning, uh, they are kind of short, five, age per group, five years per group, sorry. And then on the adulthood, we go more to 10 uh, uh, years per group because we, the, the appearance changes Slow, slowly, or more slowly. And finally, we have a group for like uh, over uh, 61. So in order to, to be able to model this, we had to, um, to collect some uh, new data set. So this consists on uh, more than, uh, let's say, 6,000 6, image pairs uh, that we annotate in a semi-automatic fashion with an off-the-shelf uh, age estimator, and plus some manual annotation to uh, polish the uh, result. Uh, so the pairs consist on uh, the same person, but in two neighboring um, age groups. So um, the, the first problem here is how to um, align the faces, because they have different poses, uh, they have different facial expressions, etc. So in the literature, this is typically done uh, with, uh, let's say, trying to warp a face in using landmarks try to warp it into, let's say, a mean landmark phase. Uh, the problem of this, as you can see, is that there are many, th there, are, th there are some distortions that, distortions that appear here, and therefore this is not fully convenient. And we proposed um, uh, something to overcome this, which is basically... It was fast enough. So I was saying that we were proposing something to overcome these uh, distortions, and this is uh, an iterative procedure that basically combines uh, computing uh, uh, the eigenphases, so projecting everyone into the eigenspace, then using optical flow to warp the original images into the low-rank images, and then with these uh, warped images, recompute the eigenspace and reiterate, and at the same time that we increase the number of eigenphases. So as you can see, the, uh, the aligned faces at the end uh, look much less distorted than what would happen only by aligning with um, by aligning the, the landmarks. So it's important to notice also that this is done by a uh, pair of um, age groups. So we have a different Eigen space per each uh, pair of neighboring uh, age groups. So how do we use this? Uh, of course, we will use this to project the faces into this Eigen space. It is well known that the first four uh, Eigen faces encode the illumination, and therefore, at test time, they will be directly transferred to the, uh, uh, to the output phase, and they will not be used during train time. Uh, beyond the fourth one, uh, they represent texture, and therefore, they are uh, usable or they are used to learn um, these average uh, aging patterns that are common, let's say, to everyone. And to do this, we proposed a double GRU-based uh, recurrent autoencoder. So in, in a bit more details, we have this uh, input low-rank young face. This goes into the encoder, then the decoder, and outputs the low-rank old face that um, um, uh, should be. Sh so, so this is the process that should take into account the common uh, aging process. 
And uh, to do this, we have, um, let's say, the encoder, both the encoder and the recorder are uh, gated recording units. And this is the first uh, time uh, that this structure is proposed. And this is, in, this is necessary and interesting because it allows us to have a high dimensional hidden state that is able to capture and encode um, complex um, dynamics that are inherent to the aging process. So in, on top of this, we, uh, we proposed we, uh, modification of the regular laws because all textures are equally important. We, uh, we widen the um, eigen um, coordinates by the eigen values so that all of them have the same uh, weight in the final loss. So now that we know how to do the common, um, let's say, average aging process, which is this uh, uh, middle um, part of the pipeline, um, we, are, we are left with two additional problems, which is how to take into account the input, uh, the, the unique characteristics of the input phase, and how to kind of generate or account for the unpredictable random aging effects. So the first one is um, a linear operation. We just take the low rung uh, child, let's say, <coughs> sorry, and uh, subtract it to the input child and add the low rung teenager that is the output of the um, uh, recurrent um, uh, structure. This gives us uh, a phase that is an age phase of the original input and that also encodes some uh, unique properties of the phase. And then the, the last, let's say, random uh, or unpredictable aging effects are done by finding the low rung neighbor's neighbor in the teenager space, let's say, and then uh, add, so subtract it to the low rank child and add the corresponding nearest neighbor full rank phase. So that at the end of this brown pipeline, we have a phase that more or less corresponds to the low rank teenager, but also has some details corresponding from the full rank teenager. And then we take a convex combination of, uh, of these two to generate the, the final uh, output image. In terms of experiments, we uh, first uh, perform some quanti quantitative evaluation on cross-age verification. For this, we use the FGNet dataset, uh, but this is used only for tests. Okay, so this means that on the methods here on the right that need some training are either trained on the dataset of their paper or trained with the dataset we captured at that I described at the beginning of the talk. So this uh, AFGNet dataset, uh, we took a subset of it that is, uh, corresponds to more or less 1,000 positive uh, pairs that have an age gap of more than 20 years, and 1,000 negative pairs that correspond to faces of different people. So we can see here on, the, on this curve that uh, the purple and the yellow, that are the recurrent uh, proposed method and the dictionary learning method of uh, ICCV last year, uh, have much better performance than the phase verification CNN uh, of uh, NIPS 2014 and that uh, the illumination aware age progression. So I would now like to show you, uh, so, but because one sees this graph and says, okay, then what's the advantage of having the RFA if it does the same as CDL, right? Okay, uh, then I will show you some qualitative results that I hope they, they, they will convince you. Here we have six different um, examples. On the left, uh, so they correspond to different aging processes. Let's say input, output, age is uh, different. So the left is the input phase. Then we have uh, the phase produced by the phase transform, uh, the couple dictionary learning, sorry, the CDL, and the uh, recurrent uh, phase aging method. This is the one that we proposed. You can see that uh, the, the two, uh, the phase transform and the dictionary learning based method, uh, generate images that, generally speaking, have a lot of texture but also uh, lots of artifacts. In some sense, sometimes they have too many texture. On the other hand, we, our method produces a much more smoother face um, than the other ones, and that uh, for sure, or at least in these examples, they don't have um, any, any ghost artifacts. So um, as a take lab uh, message, uh, we uh, presented a method that is able to um, model the, the smooth transitions of the aging process and also to generate images associated to it. And we did this by exploiting a two-layer uh, gated recording um, uh, unit uh, autoencoder um, that is able to model these uh, very complex uh, dynamic changes in the appearance. 
As a future world, we'd like to use uh, age detection so that we don't need to input the age into the system and also to work on generating sharper textures. So finally, I would like to show uh, a demo of this uh, recording phase auto encoder in action. We input a very, very, very young, like a baby uh, picture, and we are generating different um, uh, faces for different uh, ages. And you can see how uh, we almost have no ghost artifacts, although uh, it would be, it, it is also true that uh, maybe the textures are not so sharp, and that, uh, as I said, in the future work, we would like to, to work on it. We can also observe a very curious effect that is apparently as you grow older, uh, you grow happier. So here is my question for all the senior researchers in the audience. Is there happiness after postdoc? Thank you very much.